Hey guys, Jason with Thinline Defense. As you know, TLD has been a fan of Olight for a while. Now, we're not saying that they are the pinnacle of light design, but they make well-crafted lights with great features at a great price. And let's see what they cooked up for us this time. I'm sure you guys have either seen or heard about Joe torture testing an Odin Mini. Shotgun. And that has become our favorite long gun mounted weapon light. Yes, I like my cloud defensive rain. But with the Olight performing well with what I need, and the torture test Joe put it through, I'd rather save $200 and get the Odin Mini. Now, one thing that I don't really like about the Odin Mini, it doesn't really function very well as an EDC light. Sure, you can remove it from its mount easily, but the mount Olight design makes it a great QD option, but not so comfortable in the pocket. Enter the Warrior series of Olights. This series of lights are kind of pushed as a good EDC light that can also be mounted on a weapon. But one of the things that I've come to realize, if you try to design something to fit in multiple categories, it never really does great in any of the categories. So how good is the Warrior 3S? Well, let's find out. Now let's get on the bench and unbox this thing first. All right, let's see what we got. So kind of a different, different uh, actuator pad. So a high and a low, which I really like. What they've done before is they just had one button and it was always high. It's kind of interesting. It looks gigantic. Like, look how far that hangs off the rail. We really want that? I don't know. It's kind of nice that it locks in that way, though. So you got to pull it up to adjust. Picatinny, though, you know, I'm not a fan of that. This is all polymer, it feels like. This is metal. Looks like a QD. It might be a QD thing down there. I don't know. All right, into the box. As always, these warriors come with a nice little pouch. I like this stonewash look. First thing to touch on is the design of this particular flashlight. Olight does a great job in color options that they have for their lights. From a zombie green with blood splatter to this stonewash finish, Olight comes out with some cool colors. Now onto the design itself. This model uses a titanium alloy construction. That makes it high strength, and it has good corrosion resistance. On turbo mode, we can get up to 1850 lumens and their moonlight setting has a 55 day runtime. The side switch has four lights on either side. The right side is the battery level. The left side alternates depending on what light mode you're on. You have two ways to actuate this light, either the tail cap, which lets you go into turbo or strobe with the push of a button, to the side button that lets you cycle through the options except for turbo mode, which is only actuated by the tail cap. Now, one of the things that I have personally had an issue with, with my lights, and reading through comments, a lot of people have this issue as well. They get too hot. I'm not joking, there are plenty of pictures out there of lights burning holes in people's pockets. Well, Olight has a fix, sort of. Olight includes a proximity sensor at the front of this light. While in turbo mode, if you were to get the head of this too close to anything, the sensor recognizes that and auto dims the flashlight. You now have less of a worry of your pants catching on fire from your flashlight. This has your typical Olight, low, medium, high turbo settings, but something I haven't seen a lot of yet on their lights is a strobe function. Now, not entirely usable for the everyday person, 
But it's still a feature that I wish I saw more of in Olight flashlights. You have your typical magnetic charging option. It comes with a nice metal pocket clip that doesn't take a year to get. And your favorite libertarian knows exactly what I'm talking about. And there are upgrades you can get for this, like a weapon mount option, or the one I'm most excited about, a rail switch that isn't just on and off. Now, that is one complaint that I've had about most of their rail switches. It was on and off only, and usually your options were high lumens only. The new rail switch has a high and a low lumen option. Now, this is great, especially if you're clearing a room with an 800 lumen flashlight. I mean, yeah, you're probably going to blind the bad guy, but you're going to blind yourself too. Adding a low lumen option on the rail switch is an awesome addition Olight is bringing to the table. So where do I stand on the Warrior 3S? As I mentioned before, when a company designs a product to fit in multiple categories, it can, but it probably won't be the best in any of them. As an EDC light, I really like it. I get great runtime in the lower settings when using it for stuff I'll mostly be using it for. Where the hell those primers go? But the higher lumen options and the strobe make it great in a tactical sense as well. As a weapon mounted light, I'd probably stick with the Odin Mini. I like the Odin Mini weapon mount option better than this one Olight concocted for the Warrior 3S. However, I do like the rail switch for the Warrior 3S more than I do for the Odin Mini. Maybe I can swap them. But that leads us to another reason the video is releasing today. The Olight sale for this light starts pretty much right now. If you like the stonewashed look, they're only making 3,000 of them. You could save a few bucks and buy the non-limited edition one. Now, usually these sales are better than any discount code we can get for our viewers. If you're watching this when a sale is not going on and you really want to pick up something from Olight, make sure you use our discount code TLDCO to save yourself a little bit of money. But that's it for me, folks. I hope this content helps you in your purchasing decisions. I want to say thanks to our Patreons and our YouTube members for the constant support that you provide. And thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below with a picture of where on the doll Olight hurt you. All right, guys, I'm out. No, swapping the switches don't work.